Good evening. Welcome to our devotion for Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. Starting a new month, and we're starting the month with a little rain, a uh, gentle rain. Not a lot of rain, but uh, rain nonetheless. Uh, it was good. Uh, our portals of prayer today talks about the shofar, the ram horn sounding. And it, it talks about Numbers 10, 8 through 10. It uh, talks about uh, making the uh, trumpets in, uh, uh, in the uh, wilderness. And to sound the trumpets, as it says in Joel, blow a trumpet and Zion sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Uh, it was a call to war gather together to get ready for war. But these were not the ram's horns, as it noted. In numbers, they were silver trumpets. Now, you say, well, were there silver trumpets? Were there silver instruments then? I looked it up, actually, and found that hammered, horns hammered out of metal were invented or made somewhere around the year 1500 BC and they were found in the tombs of the pharaohs and guess who was in Egypt around 1500 BC give or take yes God's people so God directed them to make trumpets to blow, and they would sound them one way for uh, to go to battle or to fight in one direction and blow them twice to go another direction. Uh, so it was kind of a signal. But the shofar, the ram's horn, was different. The ram's horn uh, stood for God represented the call of God to the law and also represented the eternalness of God. You see, when they were celebrating Passover, they were supposed to take a ram, not a... And uh, uh, this is later on. But they would take a ram and they would bake it, and they would eat it standing up, and they wouldn't have any leftovers. Whatever they would had left over, they would incinerate, except for the horn. The horn would survive. The horn is a symbol of eternity, unlike a deer or a moose or any of uh, elk, any of those types, who lose their antlers or horns every year a ram keeps his horns and it keeps building and building and building so it's a reminder that god is eternal he's always there the ram's horns were used to blow during festivals special festivals a call to the people to come in the presence of god and worship god uh, like at Rosh Hashanah and the year of Jubilee and the start of most all the festivals. They were also used uh, around the uh, city of Jericho to uh, have the walls to come tumbling down. It was only years later that the shofar the horn made from a ram's horn was fitted with a silver mouthpiece uh, so that it would be easier to blow. So the ram's horn calls us to God and it's often used in psalms, which is uh, many of the psalms are a call to worship, psalms of ascent. But the uh, silver horns, like I said, are used uh, 
to denote battle. On Thessalonians, First Thessalonians four sixteen, uh, Paul writes, "For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God." We also hear that same message in. 1 Corinthians 15.52, which is often read at funerals as, uh, as comfort. 1 Corinthians 15.52 says, In a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. You see, in the New Testament, they're talking about the silver uh, trumpets and they're talking about battle except now it's not a call to battle because the victory has been won it's an announcement that Christ has come to declare to all people both those who recognize him and those who choose to ignore him that he is the victor, the victor over sin, the victor over death, and the victor over Satan. He's won the victory for you and for me. And we blow the horn in celebration, the sound of all of us gathering together to worship God and to be as one forever. Lord, open our ears that me way, me way we may hear and follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray Luther's evening prayer before we go to bed. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong. And graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Now go to sleep, uh, resting peacefully, rejuvenating, and waking up fresh to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. God gives you that rest because he loves you, and I love you all too. Good night.